there are some hands that happen that just kind of light the poker world up because of one sentence. Like when Stu Unger was playing heads up with a guy who had 4-5 and Stu Unger put him on 4-5 and called with 10 high. And that was super cool, right? Well, hands like that, guess what? They still happen. And they happen on the EPT in big spots. We got a fun one for you today. It's really fun. I mean, they don't just happen on the EPT. They happen on the breakdown of, in big of course. spots. Because we're going to show you the hand. We're going to show EPT. you the hand. Of course, this was suggested by four people. Bill Wendling, Holden Cantrell, Max Sawyer, and Andre Luis M. Farias. They suggested on Twitter. They included a YouTube link and a timestamp. That's the only way to do it. If you don't do it that way, you can go to hell. I'm kidding. It's I fine. Mean, I mean, you can do it other ways, yeah. too. But we probably just won't see it as easily. So here we are. We're on an EPT. We're at EPT Monte Carlo. It's a 5,300 euro buy-in. There's five players left. And there are big names. There's world champion Ryan Reese. There's Manic Loser, who's, I think, 77th all-time money winner. Some other big names as well. Not as big as those no. two, though. But impressive, tough stuff. And Ryan Reese is in a bad spot. He starts the hand with seven blinds. That's before he pays the big blind ante and the big blind. He's going to have only five blinds in front of him. He's going to have some tough decisions. He's going to have some tough decisions, but an easy decision is to sign up for Nitrogen Sports Poker Room using the link that we always tweet out when we tweet out about our videos and our podcasts because when you use that link, you get access to our exclusive Poker Guys Fans Only Tournament that mm. happens the last Sunday of every month. And Jonathan, tell them about the tournament. Well, the tournament is full of money. That's the thing <laughs> yeah. about the tournament. It is. It's a massive overlay. They guarantee a thousand buy-ins. We usually get like 80 people or so. That means it's just free money for everyone. It's like 13 buy-ins for every buy-in you pay. You basically can't help but fall into a stack of cash if you play it. It's also super cheap. It's a great deal. It's a great deal. Nitrogen is a great place. It's a Bitcoin-only poker site. And when you withdraw your money, they give it to you in 90 minutes. That sounds a lot better than the rest of the industry. I'm going to be honest about that. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to the hand. Money glows up in the small blind with six deuce. Ryan Reese started the hand with six big blinds has four behind because he posted the big blind ante and the big blind itself. Those are just calls. <coughs> and Ryan Reese checks his option with 10 deuce. <coughs> well, Reese is open-ended on the flop. Action goes check, check. It's good to see Ryan Reese back on the scene, isn't it? It actually is. It's good is. to see all those main event winners doing good stuff. You know, like enough time passes and the whole I'm the best player in the world thing fades. And now yeah, he's just like a guy. I actually forgot about right, that. Now he's just a guy you kind of root for again. Anyway, he's sitting here with the best hand. Hard to realize that. But <laughs> let's get to some decisions that are a little bit strange here. Manny Gloser is an incredibly good player. Oh. I, want, I want to start by saying that. I have no freaking clue what he's doing limping small to big preflop when Ryan Reese has six blinds to start the hand with six deuce off. Isn't this just a clear fold? What's happening? Okay, I think it's a clear fold for sure. My best guess is that Manig knows that he's completing, a, like he's completing with all his strong hands, all his calling hands, and then he's got to have some complete folds as well, where he completes and then just folds. And it only costs half a blind, and he thinks because Ryan's so short, he can often outplay him later in the hand, even if he doesn't have anything. And so this is just one of his where he's going to put in half a blind and fold if Ryan shoves. And every time Ryan doesn't, he's going to have a pretty good chance to win the pot. That's my best guess. I mean, don't you have a decent chance to win the pot if you just shove? It feels like option A is fold with six deuce off here with yeah. the six blind stack in the big blind. Option B is shove and try to pick up that money. And if you get called, maybe sometimes you have like your 38% equity and that's okay. And option C is to call. It seems like the worst option. I don't get it, but that's what happened. That's where we are. I don't really get it either. Anyway, Ryan checks back because he has a no good hand, and then he gets a really good flop for 10 deuce. He flops open ended, and now we have another strange decision that's non aggressive that doesn't make any sense to me. Why is Ryan checking back when he flops this well? Don't you want to just get the money in there? I mean, it feels like a great flop. There's not like another stack that's going to be super short, and there's big ICM implications here. The second shorter stack is 16 big blinds. I don't see why we're not putting the money in. It's a little bit confusing to me, too. Like, if Ryan checks back as he does and bricks the turn and Manning bets a, you know, a fair amount, yeah. like half the, or the pot, like bets three blinds, that's too much of Ryan's stack for Ryan to be able to go all in and have any fold equity. 
Now, it turns out he would in this case, yeah. right? But basically, I have zero fold equity. Like, he can't trap with this hand, is my point. So, I don't know why. This feels like a perfect move-in spot. You bet five blinds to win three. When you get called, it's fine. You're when open-ended. You, it's okay. You're desperate to get the double up When here. you get called, it's fine, and you don't want Manning to just hit, like, a six and, and take the lead here. This pot is important to Ryan Reese's right. stack, even though it's just a blind versus blind limp pot right now. So, all I can come up with, and again, I am stretching, is that Ryan thinks that Manning would be betting most of his bluffs here and must have a little something in his trapping, and Ryan doesn't want to just fall in. He wants to take the free card. But anyway, I would move in. There's much better stuff coming, so let's get to that. Okay. Let's move on. Forward pairs on the turn. I won't be surprised to see Lurzer check here again and look to go for a delayed bluff on the river. Well, Reese at this point has a lock on this with 10 high. <laughs> it's super interesting if Lurzer bets because you would imagine that pre-flop he shoves pretty much every queen, every king, every ace. So unless he's trapping with a jack, man, honestly, I know this sounds crazy to say, but Ryan Reese with 10 high might be pretty suspicious of this all in. This would be one of the most insane calls we've ever seen on an EPT final table to call with 10 high. But honestly, I don't think it'd be the craziest one. He might be able to work this out that his opponent's never doing this with an ace high, king high. Doesn't have them pre-flop. A lot of the time he's going to have these delayed bluffs. Can he make a wild call with the 10 deuce? He is definitely thinking about it. It looks like he might only have one more time bank left. Have you ever found yourself in an MTT, Finson, where you've called all in with 10 high and been Def right? Definitely not on a final table, not even close. This would be one of the sickest calls ever. But it just doesn't make sense from the six deuce. Oh, what a call! He calls all in with 10 high and will get the double up. A lot of you might be just completely shocked by this call. I mean, and on its surface, that makes sense. Ryan Reese just called with 10 high, which is literally the worst card that plays on this board. You can only have a 10 or better to play on this Jack Jack 998 board. How did he do it, and should he have done it? First of all, woohoo! How <laughs> yeah. good does that feel, Ryan Reese? Yeah. You are the best player in the world. Maybe he is. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it goes check, check on the turn. Again, I don't know why Ryan Reese isn't moving on the turn, but fine. We get to the river, and Manic does something that I think gives it away a little bit too much. Manic's sitting there, and he's assuming it's got to be a chop, right? right? Ryan would have bet any pair. Ryan would have shoved preflop with any ace, king, and probably queen even. And even if he had a queen and didn't shove preflop, Ryan is very likely, you would think, to just shove the flop with a queen because he has a gut shot and an you know, over card. And it seems like, okay, this is a stack that's good enough to shove with that. Sure. So Manning is probably sitting there thinking, Ryan has an eight or lower as the highest card in his hand, so we're chopping. I might as well free roll this bet. Right, and I'm going to free roll in a way that makes it basically impossible for him to call. Yeah. Like, so I'm just going to move him in, and it's his problem. So the, that's perfectly fine. I think that's mostly going to work. The problem is it's now a little transparent, right? On this board specifically, I don't believe Manic shoving all in with an ace. Like, that doesn't really make any sense. What's Ryan supposed to call him with? Yeah. Ryan doesn't have a king. Ryan probably doesn't have a queen, as we're saying. Ryan's just going to fold most of the time. He's, Ryan's not calling, you know, six high here or five high to chop. He's not going to do that, which is why Manning's moving in. But that cuts down on Manning's combinations of strong value significantly. It's basically full houses only. And I don't know if he's going to bet this much with a full house, because what can Ryan call him with? I actually don't love this shove, even though I understand it. I like a bet of like two, two and a half blinds better. Yeah, I think it probably accomplishes the same thing. And not just all the stuff that happens on the river makes it think that it wouldn't be a full house that often. All the stuff leading up to the river. Wouldn't Manic bet any jack or nine at, at the flop like or the turn a lot of the time? You wouldn't would think you think that? Most of the time. Right, so this is just like a pretty transparent, okay, you can't call because it's mostly going to be a chop and you just can't call for a chop. And I think Manning is okay to do that. It's not like yeah. a big mistake or anything. But Ryan's sitting there with the sneaky disguise 10 high, which is in fact not a chop. 
Manning, of course, would never put Ryan on any 10 because he would think, of course Ryan's going to move in with a 10 at some point. He flopped open-ended with that, with that stack. I mean, of course it's going in at some point. Ryan is aware of all this, and I think he puts the pieces together. I oh, think yeah. he really puts the pieces together and decides, okay, ace high. Doesn't make sense for a lot of the reasons that Jonathan said. Also, wouldn't he just move me in preflop? Yes. King high, same thing. Queen high, a lot of the same thing. Yeah. So we're down to Manning is just trying to shove me off of a chop, or he's doing some high-level, super tricky stuff. He's got, like, quad jacks, and I guess I'm out of the tournament. But if that's the case, so be it. I think, actually, logically, this does all add up to a call, even though it seems crazy. I agree with Ryan Reese here. I mean, Ryan's stack also makes it easier to make this call, right? Ryan is the extreme short stack at the table. The <laughs> next biggest stack is, like, 16 blinds. Ryan's sitting here with five in front of him now after he's already paid the yeah. big blind. I mean, he's, he's going to have to be going with the hand in the next few hands anyway, so because they're five-handed, right? So the big blind ante's coming around pretty quickly, even though he just was the big blind. He's got four hands before that happens again. It's not crazy to say, this is a spot where I'm going to be good some of the time. And to be clear, the difference between calling before we were saying, like, um, he's probably going to fold if it's a chop. Yeah. Right? The reason why is Ryan would be, would be risking his tournament life and his five blinds in front of him to win one and a half blinds yeah. versus now by having the 10, he risks his five blinds in front of him to win a pot that will ultimately be 13 blinds. Now that includes his five. So it's yeah. like eight. He wins eight blinds by doing that. That is such a massive difference. Yeah. That, that, that's how he can sort of justify this to himself. And that's why I think Manic is moving him in because he assumes Ryan's folding for a chop. But this is why Ryan's calling also, because Ryan can win so much more because it won't be a chop. Right. I think what it came down to is Manning made a transparent bet, which is fine, because it's usually going to be right and it's usually going to work. And Ryan usually is going to have a chop. But Ryan played a 10 very strangely. And because he played it that way, he has to call here because he figured out what's going on here. I know it sounds crazy, but really, I like, I like it. I think it's correct. Yeah. So some stuff on this hand we feel like we really understand the river play. Some yeah. stuff we don't understand as much. Pre-flop play by Manic Loser. The flop play and really turn play by Ryan Reese, we don't entirely get. Maybe you guys don't agree with us on the river. Maybe you do think you like what these guys did um, earlier in the hand as well. Let us know in the comments, because we're not sure, especially about Loser's pre-flop play, and why doesn't Ryan shove on the flop or the turn? We just don't get it. Although we have some guesses, of course. What do you think? Let us know. Yeah, we don't really know at all why those things happen in those other times, but we do really like the river call. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like it a lot. And what we also like to do is our podcast. It is the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the poker guys. You can get on all of your favorite podcast apps. It's how we come to all of these conclusions. We spend 45 minutes, an hour sometimes, talking about one hand, making jokes, having fun, really getting deep into all of the stuff that you wouldn't hear on the video maybe. You're like, could you talk more about the turn? Guess what? The podcast, we talk more about the turn. You might like it. Now, you may say to yourself, Boy, the way Ryan Reese played this, that was kind of like elite. Yeah. And guess what? We've got a whole playlist of elite hands that we've done on this show. Just click right up here to check them out. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe.